Uh, hello, good evening, everyone. This is Adam Schomer, and this is our 6 p.m. Wednesday meditation and breath work. If you're new, uh, we do breath work, about 10 minutes of breath work, pranayama, and then we um, settle into a meditation and usually use words, spoken words, English, sometimes some Sanskrit, but usually English words to help us dial in and tune in a little bit deeper into the on the energetic level, the prana, the consciousness. So pranayama, prana meaning energy, yama meaning alignment. So pranayama, you know as breath work, but we're really aligning the energy or tuning the energetic body. And if that sounds too woo-woo, it's just literally like tuning in a ra radio station. You do breath work to communicate to the body, to tune into a frequency that's one that's more of peace, more of less fear, that might be more expansive. And in this case, we'll do some breath work that helps balance, helps really build some energy and then balance us, you know, especially we're near the full moon and you know, the energy can be a little bit more up and down or gosh, we're just humans and we're in life. So energy can be up and down and it's nice to have balance and grounding. So the three breath works we'll use help us balance, we'll build energy and then balance that energy. And then we'll use certain words and mantra to help tune us in a little more. Let us know where you're jo joining in from. Again, my name is Adam Schomer and uh, producer of HEAL and happy to have been doing this, these meditations with you for the last, I think, three, four years now. So thanks for joining. Let us know where you're joining in from. Cool. Marcy, hello. How are you? And I'm here in Los Angeles. If there's a little noise in the background, uh, sometimes it happens that the, the gardeners are doing some work just at this time. Okay. Australia, wonderful. Good morning to Australia. Good. And we'll start in about two minutes. So if you want to just get a nice, comfortable seat, uh, that would be wonderful. That'll help. Mexico, amazing. Chile, bienvenidos from Chile, bienvenidos Mexico, Wisconsin, welcome. New Mexico, nice. Hong Kong, amazing. Worldwide audience that we have going here. And uh, Teresa from Texas, wonderful. Teresa, nice to see you. Michigan, Claret, wonderful. My hometown is uh, that Birmingham, Metro Detroit area is where I was born. Florida, wonderful. India, good. My other home is India, Rishikesh, India. So good. New York City as well, Ontario, Canada. Amazing. Good, good, good. Cool. We'll start in one minute. So again, you can get a nice seated position. Tucson, Arizona, amazing. I'm just going to adjust myself a little bit so I can sit a little more straight up. I had to move last minute to be less noisy. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's go ahead and tune in. Good, nice and tall. Spine, close the eyes. And we like to always begin with just including. So we're not trying to push anything away. We're not trying to push sensations away or sounds away. So we're including our awareness, any sensations of the body. Include also any sounds in your area. Include also in your awareness any thoughts, any feelings. It's important that we include, again, let the awareness, we're building this thing called awareness, a muscle called, called awareness. So we're including sensations, including sounds, including, yes, thoughts and feelings. Yeah. And then also including the earth in our awareness, including the air, the space in our awareness. Also including the sun. And then including this essential thing for life, prana, consciousness. And then we stay with that prana. We'll just do a nice, simple amrita breath, breath of nectar. So you sip in through the mouth slowly, like sipping through a straw. Then pause the breath, focus the third eye. 
and exhale through the nose. Just like this for three minutes, you sip in through the mouth, like sipping in energy. Pause, focus at the third eye, then exhale through the nose. Keep that going, in through the mouth, pausing at the third eye and exhale through the nose. Again, any sounds, don't worry, it's just part of it. Just include the sounds. What can you do? This is the Amrita breath, breath of nectar. You just want to really connect to the prana. Again, if the thoughts come up, that's fine. You become aware of them and then just reconnect to the prana, meaning this consciousness as you're sitting, like as if you're sipping it in through the mouth. And then focusing it at the third eye and then exhaling through the nose. One more time, one more deep inhale. And then the exhale. And just check in, notice. Notice again the prana, notice any shift. <laughs> good, good. And we bring in the second pranayama. This is a balancing breath, alom vilom. So you inhale. Up the left side and just with the left nostril. You can use your thumb and fingers to close one nostril at a time or just do your best to inhale through one nostril. Okay, So you inhale through one left nostril about five, six, seven seconds. Then you pause the breath of the third eye for that same count, five, six, seven seconds. And then exhale down the right side that same count five, six, or seven seconds. Then you'll inhale up the right side. That same count. Pause that third eye for the same count. And exhale down the other side for that same count. Equal parts, up, like a U shape. Up, pause, down the other side. Up that same side, pause, down the other side. Mm -hmm. Keep that going a few minutes. This is a balancing breath. Alom vilom.
Keep it going. Balancing breath up one side. Maybe you can slow it down even more. Maybe it's 10 seconds. Again, my apologies for the sound, but if you can do your best to just include, right? It doesn't have to be perfectly silent to meditate. And breathe regularly, normally. Just breathe in and out through the nose. Check in. Notice any shift. Whatever it is. It doesn't have to feel more balanced. Just you notice whatever has occurred for you. Maybe there's more energy, more calm, more balance. Who knows? And then the last one we do, we'll do is to expand the awareness, breath of light. So seven short inhales through the nose to make one complete inhale. Pause, and then exhale. So it's seven short inhales through the nose. You pause the breath, focus at third eye. So it's just a gentle, you don't have to really look up, just bring the attention there and then exhale through the nose. And keep that going a few minutes. And if while you do it, you can expand the belly a little each time you inhale, that'll send the signal to the whole body to expand and allow more light in. It's like your belly gets a little bigger every inhale. Couple more times. Good. And just release the breath and breathe. Check in. Really stay with the prana, meaning just the, the energetic body, this, this consciousness, the awareness. In this 
more parasympathetic state, we can deeply communicate to the whole system. And we'll use words to help send a signal to all the cells. So aptly we'll use the words, I can be with this, I am free, meaning the sounds, the circumstances of life, whatever is going on, I can be with it. I can be with this, I am free. And see how the system responds to that when you say it. So you say it out loud and then breathe into it. A few breaths, breathing into it. I can be with this, I am free. Again, I can be with this, I am free. Breathe into it, allow it, all circumstances. <laughs> Again, I can be with this. I am free. I can be with this. I am free. No matter how challenging it is. I mean, sounds are nothing. <laughs> Compared to the circumstance of life, a little. Illegal gas blowing is nothing. One more time, I can be with this, I am free. Good. The next one is, life is my family, I am free. So you want to say that out loud and then breathe into it. What's that mean? What does that feel like? What is, life is my family, meaning... All particles, all things are conspiring, conspiring to support life. Life is my family. I am free. Life is my family. I am free. It's knowing that the universe supports, even when things are difficult, not the way we want them, that in some way it's supporting our practice or challenging us in a way we need to be challenged. So life is my family. We are free. Good, one more time. Life is my family. I am free. last one we'll do. I am strong. I am grounded. I am free. So just knowing that I'm equanimous, I'm balanced, right? I'm grounded. I have a starting point. This is what the key with awareness is. We have a place from which to observe. So I'm strong and I'm grounded. I am free. Breathe into it and know it deeply and on all levels. I am strong, I am grounded, I am free. Breathe into it, allow that. I am strong and grounded, I am free. I am strong and grounded, I am free. couple more times. I am strong, I am grounded, and I am free. Breathe into it, allow it into every... It is a practice, and it's something we have to, you know, build as a skill. Remind ourselves. I am strong, and I am grounded, I am free. Good, and now let's just be with all three. 
this frequency of strength and groundedness, this frequency of life supporting us, and this frequency of I can be with it all. You just stay for 30 seconds like this in, in silence, but it's, it's not. It's a dynamic frequency. It is a vibration. Yeah. Just stay with that station, that radio station, if you will, that frequency of strength, of knowing life supports you, and knowing you can be with this. And feel free to extend this frequency to anyone that might need a little bit of grounding, a little bit of balance. You know, life is a little up and down, right? Circumstances are up and down. There is sadness and happiness, but can we kind of be with both as they happen? So anyone that might need a little help with that right now, a little calm, a little balance and strength. Just include them, see them and visualize them in this in this space. Good. And again, connect to the earth, connect to the air, connect to the sun, just feel them, see them, connect to this prana, this consciousness. It's important we develop a relationship to the consciousness, the energy. That's part of what the pranayamas do is they start to tune us in a little bit more to the, to the, the consciousness, the energetic body. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes and, uh, you know, of course, thank yourself for taking time, taking 20 minutes to, to meditate. It was just 20 minutes. And you can make a profound shift, even amidst some crazy sounds. And again, my apologies for that, but maybe that was a good challenge for you. Uh, it was a good challenge for me because I don't like those sounds very much, but, but, um, yeah, are you sure the tumors weren't inside your bar? I know, it felt like that. And I've never heard someone blow uh, an air blower for 20 minutes straight. <laughs> to be honest, like, it's not a very big area that, that they're they're blowing. So um, it was a nice challenge, to be honest, to be able to be with that. Good, I'm glad someone was saying they feel much better. Uh, tea banda, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> Paulette, I'm, that, laughing is the key. That, you know, I have to laugh at myself. You know, I'm a feisty kind of by nature, a little bit of a tenacious person, but uh, Thomas, thank you, brother. Thanks for being here. I really mean it when I say, like, thank yourself for coming. Always forgive yourself 10 times a day. We're so human, so, you know, we're conditioned a lot by family, by society, by the time we grow up in, and uh, so we have to be generously forgiving of ourselves and then and then practice things like this, you know. Practice building the nervous system that can handle things. And also be kind, you know, compassionate to yourself. So forgive yourself. And maybe it'll be that much easier to forgive someone else when, you know, they're a little angry. And you go, okay, it's fine. You know, that, that's part of relationships is you just hope you're both not triggered at the same time. If one is and the other's not, this is good. If they're both triggered at the same time, difficult. Kathy, exactly. The world is full, is full of sounds. Thank you. TX to sense. Thank you. Appreciate your, this time. Wonderful. Thank you as well. 
Good challenge, says L. You guys are amazing. Yes, Penny. Penny's like, they stop now. Yeah. Embody, embody vision. Amazing. Felt the energy of the group. Deep grat. Wonderful. You guys are amazing. Catherine, thank you as well. And um, what else can I do? Ah, I do I do a lot of these on Mondays also on Zoom. Okay, so if you'd ever like to join on Zoom, it's 11 a.m. Uh, usually on Mondays. It's not on Instagram. We do it on Zoom. Just go to adam.yoga, www.adam.yoga. Put your email in, and I'll send you the link. You know, usually it's the Sunday before, Saturday or Sunday before, so you can join. It's always free. I have a lot of free offerings. If you're in the L.A. area, I do... Um, Yoga on the beach for free, which is one of the most fun things. But the pranayama it, and meditation, similar to this on Mondays, about a 25-minute set. And um, really good group. You know, you feel this group energy. It's even better, I would say, on Zoom because you get to see a little bit more faces and there's more interaction. You can ask questions out loud, too. So that's nice afterwards. Thank you, Elle. Thank you, Marcy. Uh, Penny, thank you. Grateful. Oh, you as well. Evolutionary, thank you as well. Susie, wonderful. You felt grounded good. Yeah, right. Especially, you know, if you just give yourself that direction to feel strong and grounded, it's amazing how that works. And these aren't affirmations per se. It's not like telling you're something, yourself something you're not. Uh, or, you know, like trying to convince yourself of something. This is direct programming. You're reminding yourselves of what they are naturally, you know, what's possible. It's like a home crowd advantage, all right? You're playing a sport and you're in the stadium with people cheering you on. That's what you want, right? It just works, you know? I've played soccer at high, high levels. I played semi-pro soccer, college soccer, etc. And even just playing soccer here at like, you know, down at little pickup games, I would experiment with um, starting to say things out loud like, oh, the other team's getting tired. Saying that to see the effect on the other team. And then saying to my team, oh, we're gaining momentum. Just reminding, and it just picks all the cells up. It gives possibility. It gives us the, the charge we need. So we can reprogram. And we can recondition ourselves to not be so fear and can be more toward possibility. Why, what, why not, you know? And you can feel the difference. So that's why I always say check in after. You do a pranayama and you check in and get to notice, oh, wow, look what I can do myself, empowered, and how it shifts my own energy. So it's not me saying, do this, you'll feel like that. Do this, then observe, see what happens. Do this, observe, see what happens. Right? Caus causality. Yes. T. Ben, I'm grateful for you as well. All right, so that we practice and see the effects. Practice. I feel the same about wind blowers. Good to know I can be with it. Exactly, right? It was a good challenge for us all to, you know, even if it bothered you, even if the sounds bothered you, you know, and you didn't go, you know, yell at the gardener, hey, that's a win. You know. uh, having an MRI tomorrow will use this to help me through. Wonderful, Chitsky. Wonderful. Blessings with the MRI. Yes, use this for the, yeah, because in the MRI I can feel a little bit like, yeah, like that. Use the breath work. Especially alom vilom would be a nice balancing breath. And it's probably not as, you know, the, the breath of light was probably a little too much movement. But the balancing breath in through one side with the prana, focus, and then out the other nostril, that would be good for a MRI. And maybe the amurita breath, if you can have your lips like that. That can really calm. Those two should be very helpful for you if, if, it's, you know, if it feels a little difficult to be in that machine. Embody Vision, www.adam.yoga. Exactly. That's the site. You can see the free offerings. You can put your email in. I also offer, and when you put your email in, it gives you access to my docu-series called The Road to Dharma. That's us motorcycling through the Himalayas to sacred sites in search of freedom. It's a very entertaining series with a lot of wisdom. It's a documentary. It's different than pretty much anything I've seen out there. Um, and I love giving it away for free. You can watch that, enjoy it, let it inspire you. Watch it with a loved one because it's got that mix of 
kind of life and day, death stakes, motorcycling in the Himalayas and through India, and, um, and deep wisdom. So it's got entertainment and, and something for you. Any advice for setting intentions? I'm about to set some and hesitate because I want to make sure I do it right. No, just trust yourself, you know. Uh, just trust yourself, for sure. In terms of the, the doing it right, you know, I'll give some advice on setting in intentions, but also just, just trust yourself, you know. There's no person looking over our shoulder saying you're doing life right. And um, there's surely no secret, you know. There's no like, um, <laughs> even though there's that movie's possible, you know, popular, but there's no secret or there's no one equation that tells you how to live. I used to, you know, look for that, that one way to do things, you know, so that I would know how to do it right. The key is that your intention is pure, that it's beyond just yourself, you know, that it has an element of being good for others as well. Okay, so it's not like, oh, I want to manifest a red car, you know. Um, no, think of how it'll make others feel. When we're intending and manifesting, it's to me more important on, okay, what we want to bring to the world and what we want to, how to make others feel. I want to empower people. I want people to feel empowered. Okay, we, so we focus on that. And then we can be a little more receptive and positively surrendered to the way in which that shows up so intention focus on how you'll make other people feel meaning what's good for the world okay and specific way it comes be open to the specific way that could come in a way that's maybe even beyond what you're imagining so that's really key it's one holding possibility for more than you can even imagine two the intention let it be really heartfelt. Uh, and then three, whatever for you helps you feel calm in that state or feel like um, a, a sacred space. So if there's certain gurus or statues or flowers or anything, you know, a, a sacred space for you, do some breath work beforehand, get grounded beforehand, do the 10 minutes we just did beforehand. So, you know, really parasympathetic state and then be sincere with the intention. And it doesn't even have to be that long. You know, just put it into the quantum field and know that it is, is absolutely uh, felt everywhere instantaneously. Okay. That's my advice on that. Just be sincere. Be sincere and then let go and surrender to how it might come. You know? Yeah, I mean, lady without the... So when you do your art, focus on the person. By what, I don't know. I mean, that's a personal thing when you do your, your art, you know, focus on how the person, you could try that, see how it works. Because, um, you know, art, you might, um, that's a, it's a really good question because in many ways, sometimes in art, we're trying to say something. So yes, when we're trying to say that, we are also trying to then to have it be heard. You know, I want people to be empowered. So my recent documentary on selling Superman is like, your superpower is the power of choosing how you perceive life. That's really what I want to say. You know, that's what I want people to feel is that they feel they can choose how they see themselves. They can choose what they give value to in the world. And that even though we're a product of our family and our conditioning, we can change that. Right? Now, it's a really entertaining kind of pop culture doc series, but it has that underbelly underneath it. And... Not everyone might come out feeling that, but they might. But I knew my intention of what I wanted to say. So, so it's either, you know, what you're trying to say with the art or how you want others to feel. Um, give it a shot. It's kind of like the pranayama. See if that works for you. You know, art is a very um, unique thing. Sometimes people will just want to let go and see what, what comes forth rather than even having an intention, you know. But, uh, you know, let me know how that works. I have my candles lit. Just did, men just did, uh, good, 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 good advice to be pure about it. Yes, Jen, yes. And your candles, yeah, exactly. Anything that's feels sacred to you is good. Doesn't matter. Be it Jesus, be it flowers, be it a pet, be it a family photo. You know, a place that's sacred. I just told a college graduate today, life is her book to write, ours too. Exactly. 
how you see yourself, how you perceive life is our choice. Right? It doesn't mean you totally choose everything that happens to you or what happens in the world, but we can shift our perspective of it. You know? Of most things, we have more power than we are led to believe. That's for sure, you know? I mean, you could grow up and your parents, you know, tell you you're not worth anything. But you don't have to believe that. And that's easy to say. But if someone's been taught that their whole life, that's difficult to reprogram. It can be. So, um, that's why some of these things take some practice, take some meditation, take some practice to start reprogramming and redialing in another story. Superpower is how you perceive life. Yes, exactly, Mila. That is the essence and message of Selling Superman Doc series, which is not out yet. We just finished editing it, but your superpower is how you perceive life. That really, that you have a choice in how you perceive life, which, you know, so your power is that you do get to choose. You can use that power for good or evil. You can use that power against yourself if you want and perceive everything in a negative way. But it is your superpower that, as a human, you get to choose how you perceive things. Um, maybe to a lesser extent, animals have less choice. Maybe more is instinct. And humans have more autonomy over how we see life. But I, I truly believe animals also do it as well. And they learn from us and we learn from them. And um, my cat... Today when I meditated, my cat sat and meditated with me and then stayed in that same spot for two hours after. We went off and did yoga at the beach, came back, he was still right there. He just really was dialed into that energy and loved it. So these, these cats, they know, they know where to be. Uh, any other last questions? I can stay on a few more seconds now that it's actually quiet. <laughs> but feel free to head, head over to adam.yoga. Uh, I may be doing a breath workshop for... Uh, uh, one on the June 8th weekend I'll be deciding in the next couple of days so it'll be a fairly simple four hours each morning and um, you'll come out knowing a lot of these pranayamas and how to build a little 10 minute set for yourself how to know which ones to use how to big, build deeper sets like lung cleansing sets or strengthening of the spine and sense of self sets that are longer 30 minute and we'll just really get to know pranayama and breath work. And you'll feel a little more empowered to also share it with other people, to be honest. Penny Pearl Jackson. Yes, Elle knows the name of my cat is Jackson. I wish I could share pictures with you, but um, then all my friends would laugh at me sometimes. No, but um, yeah, cats, they know it. He, he just stayed in that spot for I could not believe it. Two hours. Two hours. Good. Any other questions? Let me know if you're looking for a good gardener. Yes, uh, now underscore OT. It's www.adam.yoga. Mm -hmm. Adam.yoga. Uh, <laughs> sharing cat pics are the best. Thanks, Jen. No problem. Good. All right, thank you guys for joining here on Heal with Kelly, formerly called Heal with heal documentary we just changed the instagram name and and rebranded a little bit to let you know we're expanding and kelly's doing more things like conferences etc so mila thank you can't wait to learn more with you as well how can you change to a higher vibration Susie? like we just did we just did it that is exactly how you do it we just did it you tune in you change the breath you start communicating communicating to the body and I think of it like a radio station. I really do. It's like, well, what am I tuned into? What mode of thought? What station? What pattern? And we just tune into it. And that's the higher vibration. And of course, these pranayamas, kriyas, movement with mantra and breath, these things help build the nervous system, help shift the energy very quickly. Meditation, breath work, yoga listening to wisdom all these things help shift us all right very good namaste everyone thanks again i appreciate you taking that challenge of the the loud meditation that we had all right namaste bye-bye